Hi everybody, today's video is about factoring by grouping. Now, uh, covered so far in this unit is of course a review of common factoring. Uh, we went into how to uh, do simple quadratic factoring. The last couple of videos were then about factoring difference of squares and factoring perfect square trinomials. And um, again, each one is uh, each one of these is a pattern and it's recognizable and you can know which kind of factoring to do. Uh, today, we're going to be factoring by grouping, uh, and then uh, you will use this skill actually immediately afterwards in the, uh, in the final type of factoring, factoring by decomposition. But factoring by grouping, um, and again, because pattern recognition is so important, uh, some of these are pretty easy to recognize. Pattern recognition. Um, factoring by grouping is uh, fairly easy to spot because um, it usually involves a polynomial that has four terms. So a four-term polynomial is usually involved. Okay. So factoring by grouping, how does it work? Well, I want to start by pointing this out. If we had an expression like 3x plus ax, and I asked you to factor that, you would look at that and say, well, there's a common factor, right? They both have an x and an x, so to factor it, we would have to write the x as the common factor and what's left over, well, the 3 plus the a. And if I said, well, that's great, uh, how about you factor this? 3 bracket x plus a bracket x. You'd probably look at me funny and say, well, that's exactly the same thing, right? Uh, there's a common factor of an x. Whether I put the brackets on or not, it's the same thing. Um, so I just want to take you to one more step and say, well, how about this? 3 and plus a, but what's in the bracket here is not just going to be a simple x, but maybe something like an x plus 1. And I think that uh, maybe you can see that, well, um, an x and an x are a common factor here, an x and x are a common factor here. Here's a term that has x plus 1. Here's another term that has x plus 1. The common factor here must be the x plus 1. Uh, and then we could uh, say, well, what's left after I take the x plus 1 out of the 3, well, x plus 1, if I divide it out of both things, right, they will basically cancel away, and we'll be left, of course, with uh, 3 plus a. Um, really, there's no uh, big difference in how we factored um, this one and this one, right? Both times we just took out the common factors, just that the common factor here happened to be a binomial. So, um, if we worked our way backwards, maybe one more step, right, took this expression and put it all the way to back to its simplified form, right, it would be 3x plus 3 plus ax plus a. And this is exactly what an expression might look like, and you might get the, inst the instruction then to factor it, and you would have to know what to do with it. And as I mentioned, uh, pattern recognition, you would say, hey, that's a four-term polynomial. This is probably something that I need to factor by grouping, or perhaps it could be factored by grouping. How do you do that? Well, you take a look at this thing, and usually we then break it into groups. I usually just put little lines underneath to tell myself uh, which two groups I'm going to, fa to uh, break it up into, and then each of those groups we common factor. In this group here, the common factor is 3, and I'm left with an x plus 1. In this group over here, I'm left, or the common factor is an a. When I factor that out, I'm left with an x plus 1. And so once I've done that, I see, oh, now I've got this uh, half-factored expression. But in there, I have a common factor of x plus 1. So I'm going to finish off by taking out that x plus 1 and be left with um, the 3 plus a. All right, so here's an example we could look at. Um, the instruction is to factor, and we always ask ourselves, well, what kind of factoring or what method of factoring could we use? Because it's four terms, um, we would probably go with uh, factoring by grouping, which means that we'll probably want to break this up, this guy up into a couple uh, groups. Um, common factor in the first group is the m, so I'm left with x plus y. The second uh, factor in the second group, well, I've got this minus n and minus n. I think I'm going to take out a minus n, and uh, I'm going to be left with x plus y as my, uh, my remainder after I factor out the negative n, right? Of course, that sign makes sense. Uh, and lo and behold, I do have a common factor of x plus y. Uh, leftovers are m minus n. There we go. Factored. 
Uh, here's another example. Uh, 3a plus 3b plus a squared plus ab. Well, again, uh, four terms, so I'm going to break it into two and two terms. Uh, out of the first one, I can take a 3. I'm left with an a plus b. Out of the second two terms, it looks like there's an a in common. I can uh, get an a plus b there. And uh, then common factor between those two is the a plus b leftovers, the 3 plus a. So uh, factoring by grouping, fairly straightforward. Um, here's, a, here's an example um, that's worth noting, something like this. Uh, 3x squared minus 3 minus x squared y plus y. Um, I'll take a look at this and say, well, out of these first two, uh, I can take out a 3, and I'm left with an x squared minus 1. Out of the second two, well, there's a minus there, so I better take out a minus, and I have a y in common. If I watch my signs, then I think I'm left over with x squared minus 1. And common factor between those two groups is x squared minus 1. Uh, I'm left with a 3 minus y, and I always do have to check myself, am I really finished? Um, not actually, because one of my factors is still factorable. I need to remember that a square minus a square, like x squared minus 1, is a difference of squares. So that factors right down to x plus 1, x minus 1, the 3 minus y is, uh, is still there. So this one ends up all the way down to being 3 factors. That's just about it for uh, factoring by grouping. It's one of the easiest thing, easiest types of factoring that, uh, or easiest methods of factoring that we learn, I think. I do invite you to watch just for another minute or two. Um, I'm going to show some kind of advanced factoring by grouping um, that will be covered next year, but it's worth just taking a look at right now. It's always worth looking at an example that's a little bit tougher or that... Uh, might throw you off at first. Um, looking at this one, looks very much uh, like something that can be factored by grouping in the normal way. Right? There's a common factor here, and I'm left with a 6y, and a common factor here, I'm left here with, right? And I did the first step of factoring by grouping, as I should, but after doing that, I noticed that the things that I'm left with, these binomials, are not the same. So I've done my first step, but um, the, uh, the factors just don't work out. However, there would be a different way to group these. I could actually group these things as a, um, as a group of three and a group of one. Huh? Now the group of one stays, but if I look at uh, this, this first group of three, the x squared plus 6xy plus 9y squared, I might recognize that that is a perfect square trinomial. That factors down to something like this, x plus 3y. And uh, once I've done that, I've... I've uh, got the second step, and if I observe it, I'm, I might think to myself, hey, this whole thing is a square, right? It's a square of a binomial, but it's a square. 9 is a square. I've got a square minus square, which is a difference of squares type, right? If it was um, x squared minus 9, then I, would, right? then I would say, well, that's x plus 3 and x minus 3. And I've added just a bracket in to make it a little bit more clear. Um, and I think over here, instead of just an x, I've got actually an x plus 3y. So I'm going to do the exact same thing, right? They're going to be both plus 3 and minus 3 from the, from the minus 9. The first half of the square is x plus 3y in both cases. Right? So I've actually factored this guy down to x plus 3y plus 3 and x plus 3y minus 3, right? So we actually have factored this down to two trinomials. And if you're watching, you might be interested in this special case as well. Um, here, we could factor this one down, I think, uh, 2 by 2. And the second one is fairly straightforward, right? A 3, uh, 3x minus 3y factors down to minus 3 with an x plus y. x squared minus y squared is, again, a difference of squares, square minus square. So I can factor that, and it factors to x plus y x minus y. And can I go any further? Well, I can if I've got a something in common, and I do. I have the binomial x plus y in common, right? And uh, so if once I take my x plus y out, what am I left with? Well, from the first one, I'm left with 
x minus y, and from the second one, I'm left with minus 3. So uh, here's just a case of factoring by grouping that, um, that factors down to a binomial and a trinomial. Right? Anything that we've just done on this slide, uh, you wouldn't probably have to do this year. It might appear as a bonus question on a test, but, uh, but it will appear in your grade 11 course.